Well, it's not bad if you're for. Just love hearing good morning back. <laughs> I, I was fearful there for a while there as we were getting our announcement the other day that I wouldn't be able to actually do this for very much longer, but so, so thankful to be able to hear physically, to be able to see one another, to have fellowship in the Lord. I just want to welcome everyone here in the name of the Lord. Um, we are here at a special service, our carl service, as we look afresh at the wonderful truths that changed the world. Those truths that don't, weren't only from 2,000 years ago, but truths that change our lives and give us hope even now. Um, with that in mind, um, what we do, I, that's why I always love in Scrabble, and I know in some ways it's not been quite the same uh, in the last wee while, but let's take some time and let's welcome one another in the name of the Lord um, in whatever way we can. I know we can't get up, uh, but let's turn around and wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone in the hall. Um, good to see you as well and those watching at home. Although we can't be in one place at one time, we remember that through God's Spirit that we are one people. <laughs> and I suppose that's always the visual reminder, wherever we are watching this, that the Spirit of God binds us together. But as we come to worship, we do so as people of God. Because God is with us. And as we think of that first Emmanuel, we know that there not only was Emmanuel born 2,000 years ago, but Emmanuel makes a difference now. Although we can't see with our eyes, we know that God dwells with us. And so if you close our eyes, we're just going to have our call to worship, which is based on Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Come, O Lord, and send your light. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come and bring the light of God. Come and walk among us this morning. Be our Savior and our friend. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come to bring us peace. Amen. It's not wonderful in the midst of chaos. God comes to bring peace. And I know for many of us at the moment, life is chaos. That we are anxious about ourselves, we're anxious about our loved ones. We are anxious about our society, our economy, our world. And in the midst of this, God speaks peace and joy. Into the midst of this, God brings himself and gives us strength and hope which prevails. And this is, this is why Christmas is even more important than ever before as we grasp hold of those truths and allow them to sustain us in what we do. And with that in mind, we focus on the Lord our God as we come as one people, wherever we are, to sing his praises. And so we're going to begin our service this morning with the words of once in royal David say. Let the beautiful words of these carl lift us in praise.
Be seated. And as I was saying, how much a lift it's been that we have been able to worship once again. Anybody who has talked to me knows that it's like floating in the air how, much, how great it is to be here physically. But I'm sure you're just like me. Every Sunday morning is also a bittersweet moment. As we look around and we see that we have face masks on, as we see that we are socially distanced, as we see that we're not even in the same location at the same time. But even more than that, what makes my heart break as we come on Sunday is to know that there's many because of health who can't be with us. And there's many who are in our minds and in our prayers at the moment. And I suppose if you're watching this uh, this morning and you're not, you haven't been able to get out, just to know that we as a church, we miss you, that we have been praying for you, and we, we really um, can't wait that you'll be able to safely come here once again. And with that in mind this morning, we want to maybe do something a wee bit different. And we know, thankfully, with technology, there's some great advantages of that, that some of those who haven't been able to be with us physically are going to be able to be with us um, in giving our readings this morning. So we're going to have a number of readings this morning. Um, and our first one is going to come from Genesis chapter 22. Um, 15 to 18, and that's going to be looking at how God gave promises to Abraham um, centuries before the coming of Christ, and how they would point to the one who would come at Christmas. And they're going to be read by Emma and Finn. The Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. The descendants will, your descendants will take plot possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me it's your heart to see people that you haven't been able to see and to know the message they present of one who would come to bless the whole world we're now going to focus once more on the Lord our God, the God who gave those promises to Abraham and the promises to us. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this, the final Advent Sunday, we rejoice that we can worship you as Lord and Savior, to know that you are faithful in every single way, each Christmas time, Lord, we are reminded of the grace that you have lavished upon us. And although we have heard these messages over and over again, although we have sung those carols time and time again, Lord, we thank you that your truths are as relevant today as the day that they were spoke. And so, Lord God, we do pray as we come to this carol service that, Lord, we will not be just ticking boxes, but Lord, that through your word that you may bring great transformation, that you may bring great truth, and that in light of those promises that our hearts may respond in awe. Awe of who you are and who you have revealed yourself to be in Christmas. Lord, those truths are too wonderful for us to even comprehend. And as we consider how mighty, how powerful, how strong you are, that your majesty knows no bounds, to think that time and space could not confine you, to know that you hold our very existence in your hand moment to moment. And Lord, the more we acknowledge your glory, the more we see the absolute miracle of that first Christmas. As the Age, this eternal one, became a baby. The omnipresent one was confined to a space in a manger in Bethlehem. 
The all-powerful one became a weak baby boy. Lord, today we look to Jesus, flesh of our flesh, who walked the walk that we should have but couldn't so that we could be brought into your light as children of the Most High. By your Spirit today, may we know the heights and width and depth of your love for us in Christ Jesus. May it influence how we not only celebrate Christmas, but our very lives. Lord, as we search our own hearts this morning, we know that so often we only acknowledge your name, but don't really celebrate your birth. We tick all the boxes, but so often leave you to the margins. We become so busy with other things and other people that we often don't give you the time you deserve. Yet, Lord God, we confess these our sins before you and ask that you would enable us to keep you central in all our Christmas celebrations. And that through the blood and grace that we find in Jesus, that we may find peace and hope through you and you alone. Lord, by your Spirit, give us the strength to be your people that you have called us to be. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We now come to our second reading, um, which is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. And in this, it talks about the stump of Jesse and how from this stump which had been, will be brought down, that there will be a new king. And that's going to be read to us by Sandra Lennon. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Sandra, you're watching. Merry Christmas to you too. <laughs> I'm sure everybody echoes that as well. We're now going to join as a people again, and we're going to sing our next I Am A Praise, um, a good carol uh, that we sing each year, Away in a Manger.
We move on from some of the prophecies of the Old Testament um, which foretold the Messiah. There was many others we could have read from. And we move on to the events of the coming, the fulfillment of those promises. And we see that in the New Testament. And so our next uh, reading will be taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And it's going to be read to us by Brian Diamond. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at those words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. We have our birthday slot now, um, and I'm assured that someone actually does have a birthday. Look, I believe it's your 21st birthday. Just because just I'm psychic, you know, that, that's how I knew. And I'll not tell you who dubbed you in, but I'm sure it's probably quite obvious. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably get, get that person later. I'll, I'll not even mention the gender. <laughs> but we're going to pray for Luke. Happy birthday, Luke. Hopefully you have a good, well, as good as you possibly can at this time, celebration. So let's pray for Luke. Dear Lord our God, we come and we thank you. We thank you that in the midst, even of difficult days, that we can celebrate. And we thank you for Luke, Lord. We thank you for each day that you have given him, Lord, and uh, Lord, we thank you for this special birthday, being 21 years old. God, we pray you may bless him uh, and in his future and that you may direct his paths. God, we do thank you that you're the God who knows us and cares for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, boys and girls, uh, although we don't quite, it's not quite a children's dress today, but we do have a wee video for you. Um, but before we, I put that on, I want you to kind of be thinking what is the reason we celebrate Christmas? What do you think, Natalie? When Jesus was born, exactly. We, we celebrate because Jesus was born, Jesus' birthday. Yet, the other day when we were in the car with my girls, I said, I, and they, I get the same answer. I asked them, well, why do we not celebrate the other babies that maybe was born at the same day? What's so special about this baby 2,000 years ago that it really matters now? What was different about this child which has an impact all these years later? And boys and girls, we're, if, you, if you want to look at the screen again, um, we've got a video and hopefully this gives us a perspective and maybe why that baby was not just a normal baby, and it didn't just stay a baby, but came for a purpose and that purpose would change our lives forevermore. God held in his hand 
a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked. Far off, as through water, he saw a scorched land of fierce colour. The light burned there, crusted buildings cast their shadows. A bright serpent, a river, uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it, as though waiting for a vanished April to return to its crossed banks. The sun watched them. Let me go there, he said. video imagined the sun looking into the world and seeing what was going on. And he could see that it was a place of great darkness, great despair, great hurting and evilness. And not only did he see that, but he knew that if he was to redeem and change and transform that world that he had in his hands, that he would have to come that he would have to come from a perfect place of all authority and strength and take on the human body to suffer every single day of his life and ultimately to die to to bring resurrection to us, to bring light into a world which was full of darkness. This wasn't an accident that this happened, Jesus. Even before Jesus came, he knew that this would be the way. That if he came to earth as a baby, that he would suffer and die. Yep, Jesus loved us so much that he came from heaven to earth. And so as we think of why do we celebrate Christmas? Yes, we celebrate because of a baby. But more than that, we celebrate because God loved us so much that he sent his only son so that we could be forgiven, who took on the pain that we couldn't ourselves so that we could have life. And boys and girls, that's why even today, all these years later, that we can have life and peace and joy because that baby changed everything. And we're going to hear a, a little bit more about the birth of that baby, which would change the history of the world Now, as we come to our fourth reading, so our next one is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. And that's going to be read to us by Rosemary. This day, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of, town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Appeared in that video. Did you hear the ringing? That actually was Rodney. So there you go, Rodney. You did, may didn't know that you were uh, being filmed. Our next song, it reminds us of what Jesus came to do. It says this. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tiding tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And so we sing our next item of praise, O little town of Bethlehem.
and we're going to have our final um, scripture reading. Um, if we could have it on the screen, uh, just from John chapter one. And for this, if if you could stand, and um, we're going, if you can stand, and we're going, to, I'm going to do a verse, and if you would do the alternative verse together, because we are the people of God uniting through the word. So if you want to stand, if you can, if you can't, feel free to keep sitting. I'll do the first verse, and then you do the next, and then we'll keep. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which enshines everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was not yet through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, you may be seated. I'm just going to welcome Aaron up. Aaron's going to speak to us now. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you to David uh, for putting together the service this morning and for everybody who took part, uh, for all of you at home who uh, read to us there today. It was great to see you, and it really gladdened my heart uh, to be able to see uh, you all reading and sharing in worship with us here today and leading us in worship, so thank you. Uh, folks, I just want to speak to you for a few moments. Uh, but before I do, let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time, what time of worship, time of praise, time, Lord God, where we've been able to focus on you and focus on the great promise, Lord, of you coming into our world to be the light in the darkness. So God, as we consider that for a few moments, be with us and bless us. In your name, amen. When we lived in Bangor, there was a house that was near us that had a security light that lit up nearly the whole street. Or at least that's what it seemed like to me as I approached middle age and got grumpier and grumpier. Every evening this light would be on and it would annoy me more and more. And I'd be like, do they not realize that there's neighbors here? Do they not realize? Do they not realize that this light's too bright? Do they not care about their neighbors? I'd say things like, that light would blind you. You turn that corner and that light's just straight in your eyes. And I would get grumpier and grumpier and grumpier about it. But then I reckon that for annoying as that light was, it probably did us a favor in the street. You know, it shone so bright that it could pick up anything that was going on. And there's no way that anybody would try to rob or steal something from you in the glow of that light. For as annoying as that light was, what it did was it exposed what was in the dark. It shone so brightly that it exposed everything that was going on. And as we've been journeying through these recent times, I've been struck by, by several things at points in time that have seemed poignant and, and important. And just this week, I was struck by something else that maybe reveals where maybe my heart is and where other people's hearts might be also. Something that the light of Christ has revealed. You know, when the... When the Messiah came into the world to be the Savior, he came after a period of waiting. 
a period of waiting since Isaiah had revealed the way that God would come into the world, the people were in this period, in this time of waiting. And during the wait, generations came and went, and still the wait continued. It was a wait of hundreds of years. And naturally the minds of people turned away from God. Faith in God became more about religious, being religious and looking to do the right things. It was more about keeping up appearances and rather than a true and deep longing for a relationship with God. And then with occupation and generally being messed about with the Romans and the Greeks, the people wanted the Messiah to come as the warrior. And we've looked at that over the last few weeks, haven't we? People didn't necessarily want Emmanuel, God with them. They wanted their lives back. They wanted their freedom back. They wanted their land to be their own again. They longed for the days when they could move freely, do what they wanted, do as they felt that they had the right to do. And their patience was thin. And so was their faith. It's easy to draw a parallel to what we're experiencing right now, isn't it? That's from next Saturday. We're going back into stricter lockdown conditions. Let's see what this week brings after yesterday's bombshells. And as we're forced this week to limit the contacts that we have with people, as we try to be sensible and safe, we see the anger growing, don't we? And we see the frustration that is seeping into every news story, every tweet, every conversation that people are having. We're in a period of waiting, aren't we? Waiting for lockdown to be gone. Waiting for the restrictions to be gone. And they will, but it's hard, isn't it? And it's causing us pain. But people, we've been waiting for things to be better for a lot longer than just the last eight or nine months. We, like the people of Israel, are waiting for the return of Jesus. We are waiting for Christ's return so that he will draw us up to be with him in the new creation where we will take our place in the choirs of heaven, where we will be the citizens of heaven above, where we will spend eternity singing glory to God, glory in the highest. We've been waiting 2,000 years for this. And yet it's funny how we find it so easy to be patient for Christ's return, yet so impatient for lockdown to be over. And that's the profound thing that struck me this week. I'm impatient for the wrong things. And I suggest that I'm not the only one. Verse 5 of that wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture that we just read together, which gladdened my heart so much just to hear you guys saying it with us. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome as Christ, the light of the world, comes into the neighborhood and shines a light that lights up the whole world and the situation that we are in, I wonder what he's revealing in the darkness of our own hearts. Is he, his light showing that maybe we value the here and now so much that we do not give thought to the wonder and the beauty of what eternity of Christ will actually look like? Maybe the light of Christ shines in their heart and reveals something else. As you're faced with his light, is there something else, some other sinful thought or behavior that you'd rather hide? But you can't because Christ is lighting it up and you know that you need to deal with it. Maybe this is why people don't accept Christ all the time. Why in verse 11 it says, he came to that which was his own, but his own people did not receive him. Sometimes what the light of Christ reveals in our hearts is bitter and hard. It's things that we'd rather have remained hidden and dark, things that make us uncomfortable, things that bring us into shame, make us feel bad and far from God. But if we focus on that, 
then we don't focus on what's wonderful about the light. What's wonderful about the light is that Christ our Lord is that light. And all we have to do is welcome him. Say thank you and ask for forgiveness. All we have to do is receive the light of Jesus. And he does this in verse 12. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You know, I think that's one of the most quoted verses from this pulpit. It certainly feels like it for me. I worry sometimes that you think I don't read other parts of Scripture or something to keep saying the same things. I do, let me assure you. But maybe I keep coming back to this verse and to this passage because I need it. I need to remember that the light of Christ shines in my heart. And it reveals things many times to me that I forget. I forget that I'm waiting, not for the end of lockdown, but for the day our Lord and Savior comes and takes us to be with him in glory. Our Lord won the most incredible victory over darkness. That's what Christmas is all about. Our Lord won the most incredible victory over darkness that is in our hearts, that exists in our hearts. That's what Christmas is all about. Our Lord promises that as his children, that he will take us to be with him in glory, where there'll be no pain, where there'll be no sorrow, where there'll be no death, where there will be only life. You know, maybe the light reminds me that I forget that as a child of God, this is my inheritance. What does the light reveal in your heart today? Without a doubt, we are in a period of waiting. But the lockdown restrictions, the face masks, the virus, vaccines, things are going to change. And we should be focusing on that all the time, that things will change. Things will get better. But as we're waiting for things to get better in this world, as a child of God, maybe we should remember that we're waiting for something more. Something more amazing. Something more mind-blowing. Something greater. Something that will bring us to glory with God forever. And may the light that shines into your heart today challenge you with that. And challenge you about that. And remind you that as a child of God, this is your inheritance. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, as we come to you this morning, we thank you that you are the light that shines into our hearts. And we know and we recognize that at this time, what your light reveals is often uncomfortable. Too often we're found to be sinful in our thoughts and our ways. Too often we are found to have ideas and notions that do nothing to glorify you. And we're sorry. Forgive us and help us. Help us to be the light that we need to be in the world around us. And may that begin today. Lord, as we gather this afternoon for our community carol service, may we show you and your love to this community. May we reveal something of you to a people that need you so badly. May we be a strong and impactful voice that shares you in a powerful way with a needy world. Lord God, when we think about your light, we think about those of our church family who are not with us today. I think about those who are being careful and staying away so that they're not at risk of catching this awful virus. We think of them, we pray for them because they are our family. And we long for the day when we're able to be together today again. And God, we recognize that this is a painful time for some this year. And we do pray for those who have lost someone. A year that is already hard and tough is being made harder by how these events are unfolding. God, make us, move in us as a people to make us pastors to one another. Help us, God, to be able to lift the phone, send a message, speak into the lives of those that are hurting. Bless them, God, with your comfort and your peace. Make us channels of that peace so that we may be able to show your love and comfort even in these difficult days. God of peace, as everything changes around us, often on a daily basis, we are thankful that you don't. You never change. Your love endures forever. 
you are always going to be the light of this world. May we trust only in you. Put our faith only in you. Place our hope only in you. For we ask this through your son's holy name. Amen. As the heavenly hosts came and spoke to the, 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 the shepherds, they came and they declared that the Lord had come. The heralds of the kingdom of God came and told the world that the Lord had indeed come, stepped into the neighborhood, and because of that, everything had changed. And we're going to sing praise and glory in our final uh, hymn this morning as we stand together to sing, Hark, the herald angels sing. happened again. <laughs> and now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages both now and forevermore. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Just one or two wee announcements. <laughs> Folks, this afternoon we are going to meet here again outside, socially distanced. Uh, to have our community carol service, which is in conjunction with the, the WWDA. And that's a really, really exciting thing to be able to do here uh, this afternoon. Um, we've got like a wee brass quartet coming and stuff. So if you want to feel a bit more Christmassy and sing some carols and things like that, that'll be really, really good, really exciting. Please do come along and be a part of that. 
uh, this afternoon. It looks like the weather's going to be good. So uh, it's just going to be out here, out in the church car park here, not at the shops this year, but here in the church car park. So uh, please do come along and be a part of that from three o'clock today. It'll only last about 20 minutes or so. And uh, fortunately, we can't do things like tea and coffee and stuff like that that we would love to be able to do after. But let's come together and be a witness to the community. Uh, around us here as we share in this community carol service. And then to remind you that Friday is Christmas Day. Praise the Lord. And folks, I know Christmas Day is not going to be the same this year for a lot of us. I really do, and I feel for you. And it's heartbreaking that we're not going to be able to see some of the people that we want to see. And I know that we're all facing that. Uh, and it's, 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 a, it's, it's not going to be the same this year. But look, folks, I would hate to not be able to see my church family. So if you want to come on Christmas morning, make sure you get your name to, uh, to John as soon as possible uh, so that we can get you booked in for Christmas morning. And we will be meeting here next Sunday morning as well uh, for worship. Uh, so again, it's the same idea. Get your name to John so that he knows that you're coming and we can get a space uh, reserved for you. And next Sunday morning, we're going to avail of something. Uh, our moderator is going to be speaking to us. The moderator of the church, Reverend uh, David Bruce, is going to be speaking to us virtually on the screens. We'll have our normal service to the point of the sermon, and then the moderator is actually going to has a message that he wants to deliver to the whole church, which I think is wonderful and something very uniting uh, as the PCI that we can share together as a PCI family. So uh, that's what's going to be happening next Sunday morning. So I can say our guest speaker is the, the moderator. That's kind of cool to say that, isn't it? Uh, but he'll be on the screen. Uh, Folks, enjoy this week, whatever you do. If you lock yourselves in your houses so that you can get to Friday, enjoy being locked in your house <laughs> and reflect on the light and reflect on what God has given to you and reflect on the blessings. Folks, this isn't forever, but we do have a forever place in glory that is just waiting for us. Reflect on that and remember that. And God bless you all. <laughs>